okay, as you all know that you can come see, we inform him, like, put the sound. Okay, the sound okay, Rafi? Yeah. Okay. At five, one, okay? Means six, means okay. seven. Okay. Yeah? Okay, guys. Whether at five, you just knock. Hard one. You can do Honorable Chair and the attending <coughs> Toastmasters, Assalamu Alaikum and, and a very good afternoon to all of you. Alaikum Assalam. My name is Naqi Hadar and I'm a student at Al Faisal University Riyadh. I'm here at vacation. Uh, today the topic of my speech is the last sleep. Many of us have heard stories in our lives that impact us in a way. Some touch us while others inspire us to do something great and to change ourselves. The story I'm going to tell you guys today is a story that has these qualities. A man who was a written off artist did not make any masterpieces and could not change himself or the people around him. However, once he had a desire to, to impact someone's life positively, and he did, even though he, risked, even though he risked his own life. In a small town in America, there was an apartment occupied by artists and doctors. The third floor of the apartment was occupied by two young ladies, John C. and Sue, both of whom were artists. An unwanted visitor came to the town and the doctors called him pneumonia. Mr. Pneumonia met many people and touched them with his icy fingers. John C. was one of those who was affected by this illness and was suffering severely. She was in a lot of pain and had lost all hope of recovery. She lay by her bed, staring out of the window, where she could only see a wine tree shedding its leaves and a building 20 feet across. She would lie there all day, staring at the tree, and Sue wondered how she could help her friend. The doctor summoned Sue and told her that John C. only had one out of 10 chances to survive because she did not have the will to live. However, he promised her that if she had a desire to live, the chances of recovery would improve by 50%. Sue did not know what to do and went inside her room, thought, how can I help my friend? She took her board and brushes and walked towards John C.'s room, whistling. However, she heard a pin drop in John C.'s room and stopped whistling. She sat herself down, took her board and brushes and started to paint. After a couple of minutes, she heard a murmur from John C.'s bed. She could not understand what she was saying, so she went over to her and listened intently. <coughs> Twelve. Eleven, John C. said in a very low and faint voice. What is it that you found, dear? asked Sue. Ten. Nine, said John C. without answering. She repeated, What is it that you found? Please tell me. And John C. in a very faint voice said, Sue, do you look at that tree outside the window? Yes, she said. It, the day before, it had a hundred leaves. It's only left with ten today. And when the last one falls, I shall die and get alleviated from my suffering and pain. What nonsense is this? inquired Sue. What makes you believe in such a philosophy? No, Sue. I shall die when the last leaf falls. Sue did not know what to do and continued with her work. She went to an artist on the second floor whose name was Mr. Berman. He was a written off artist and did not and was trying to make his masterpiece but did not know how to do so. There was a canvas lying in the corner of his room waiting to be painted. She told him John C's situation and Mr. Berman said he, that he would help but he did not know how. They talked for a while, and Sue left, telling him that she had to take care of John C. She came to the room and found John C. sleeping. She put down the shutters so she could not see the tree leaves falling. The next morning came, and John C. requested Sue to open the window. There was one leaf remaining, only one. John C. told Sue, let this leaf fall in a couple of minutes and I shall die. Sue kept her fingers crossed, hoping that the leaf would not fall. Evening came, but the leaf stayed intact. Strong winds blew and heavy rain came, 
but the leaf did not move. It seemed withered <coughs> as, it, as it had some patches of yellow on its edges. The night came and the shutter was shut again. The next morning, to their amazement, the leaf was still intact in its place in spite of a lot of wind that blew the previous night. The doctor summoned Sue and gave her the good news that John C. was recovering slowly. John C., in a bit of excitement, told Sue to get her a couple of pillows so that she could sit upright. The doctor just gave her a couple of medicines and, uh, and told her that she would get well soon. However, he had the bad news that Mr. Berman had died of pneumonia. The nurse told him, sorry, the nurse told Sue that, he, that his shoes and clothes were drenched with water and there was a pallet of paint of green and yellow beside his bed. There was a ladder that seemed to have been dragged from the edge of the building. They later discovered that it was Mr. Berman who had painted the leaf <coughs> on the wine tree and stuck it there in order to keep John C. alive, and he risked his own life for that. Thank you very much.